Good evening, and thank you for joining us. My name is Kristen Druger with Health Insurance Personalized. Our organization is SSN SEPA, Senior Services Network of Southeastern Pennsylvania. We started SSN because most people are not sure where to begin when navigating resources and often don't know what resources are needed until something happens. We're a group of professionals focused on providing services to seniors. Our goal is to be one place where seniors, caregivers, and families can have access to service providers in the Southeastern Pennsylvania area. Our goal for tonight's presentation is to provide some helpful tools for keeping your mind and body sharp as you age. We have two wonderful speakers this evening who will share with us what they have learned in their respective fields to keep our minds and bodies fit as we age. With that in mind, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Anita Campbell. Anita is the owner and president of Campbell & Associates, a computer company that has been in existence for 37 years. They assist companies and individuals in purchasing computers, fixing computers and analyzing hardware and software needs. Although Anita has specialized in software training most of her career, she has focused on seniors in the last five years. She enjoys helping them to learn how to use computers more easily and concentrates on what it is they want to do on their computer. She has an abundance of patience and wants seniors to learn how to use the computer to make their life easier and more exciting. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Anita and Anita is going to start our presentation. Sorry about that. Hi everyone. Um, it is my goal to help you keep your brain active. Your brain is like a muscle and you need to use it to keep it active. A computer or a tablet is a great way to do this. You can find entertainment, games, and research that will expand what you do and think. I had a client who was pretty much confined to her home and she said that her computer was her window to the world. It made her feel that she was out exploring. Whoops. Everyone is aware that you can play games on a computer or tablet. Some people look at it as a waste of time and some people look at it as a challenge. There are word games such as crossword puzzles, anagrams, words with friends, Wordle, etc. Some involve other people as well as yourself, and others are solitary games. All of them make you use your memory to find the answers. I am basically a numbers person, but I do crossword puzzles every day to challenge myself. I feel so accomplished when I can finish the entire puzzle. It is a definite confidence builder. I use onlinecrosswords.net, but there are several crossword sites available. There are numerous numbers games as well. One of the most popular number game is probably Sudoku. This is an easy one to play on the computer. You can specify the level you prefer, so you can start at the easy level and work up to difficult. While you are doing this, you will probably find that the classifications aren't always the same for you. I have found difficult levels that are very easy for me, <clears throat> excuse me, and medium ones that drive me crazy. I think a lot of it depends on the thought processes of the puzzle creator. 
Sometimes you are both on the same wavelength and sometimes you are not. I use dailysudoku.com, but again, there are many sites available. <clears throat> also, don't forget about Solitaire, Bridge, Spades, Hearts, etc. All of these games can be played on a computer or tablet. You can play Bridge against a computer or join actual games online. You can take lessons to strengthen your play or just enjoy it for the fun. There are all types of solitaire games available online and it might be fun to learn a new game or two. They have the directions and it usually will only take you a few minutes to be playing like a pro. It's also true that you can do jigsaw puzzles online. It's not exactly the same feeling as when you place a piece and it fits perfectly, but it is certainly easier than finding a space to put one together when you are already living in a small space. It is also safer if you have a cat who loves to play with puzzle pieces. <clears throat> Computers can also enrich your life through entertainment. There are more movies available than you could ever watch. And there are documentaries and do-it-yourself videos that will expand your knowledge. Some of the streaming services do require payment, but they often give you a good return. Another way that computers keep your brain active is through acquiring knowledge. A favorite part-time activity of many seniors is learning about their family through services like Ancestry.com. Some people have always been into genealogy and have an extensive record of their families. Others may come from smaller families and have just never delved into it. Doing so can fill your time with a purpose. You are learning new things about your ancestors and you may even find a new relative or two. I know that I was not interested in my ancestors as I was growing up, but now looking back on things and see how they influenced my choices through life has become much more intriguing. History serves a purpose, and sometimes we just need a little nudge to find out more about how we came to be who we are. The computer can also stretch our minds when it comes to travel, whether we are doing it virtually or physically. If you are planning a trip, researching on the computer what things are available where you are going can make it easier to plan your itinerary. If you can no longer travel, researching what is available in a desired location can make you feel like you have almost been there. You can create your own travelogue to learn about the places you wish you could visit. Another stimulating thing you can do with computers is take fun classes online. This option has been greatly expanded because of COVID. I know that the Barnes Foundation and other art museums offer classes online that teach you about the art in their collections. Most of these classes charge a fee, but some may be free. Other educational facilities offer classes on music, writing, mysteries, etc., that can get you thinking about things you have never thought about or help you to think about them in a new way. AARP sponsors seniorplanet.org, which offers a variety of free classes. You can always Google free online classes for seniors to do a deeper dive into courses that might interest you. Also, many authors have websites and newsletters that you can sign up for so that you can keep up with their new publications. 
There are many ways to keep your mind active and the computer can be a useful tool in accomplishing this goal. Most of the things I have mentioned are easy to access and don't require a lot of computer knowledge. The object is to find something that challenges you, but that you really like. You don't want something that feels like work. You want something that you can enjoy doing so that you will continue to do it. Back to you, Kristen. Great, thanks, Anita. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to move on. I'm going to introduce Sharon Major. Sharon is, just bear with me one second. Sharon has worked with seniors since 2003. In 2009, she decided to go to Harrow College to earn her associate's degree as a physical therapy assistant. She's been a licensed PTA in Pennsylvania since 2012. She worked in the hospice field as a community liaison with hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, personal care home and physicians, while working toward her degree. In 2014, she was a part of a team that opened a brand new dementia care community in Bryn Mawr, PA. There she learned of her passion for those suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. In 2021, Sharon joined the team at Prestige as Director of Community Marketing for their Philadelphia and Bucks skilled nursing communities. Her passion for elders is what drives her. So without further ado, Sharon, take it away. Hi, how are you tonight? I am going to screen share a PowerPoint. So bear with me while I pull that up. One second. Can you guys see that? I think so. Just gonna turn my video off. Here we go. All right, so my part of the presentation is keeping your mind and body healthy as we age and I'm doing the body part. So um, here we go. So the benefits of an active lifestyle for seniors. Many seniors wonder what the activity is actually gonna to do to benefit them. And the number one thing is the fitness improves senior health. On the big level, overall health quality is higher when seniors participate in exercise programs. Individuals who exercise have reduced risks of chronic illnesses and disease and have improved immune and digestive systems. Two, exercise helps with managing body weight. Exercise helps people of all ages maintain or lose body weight. However, our metabolism naturally slows with age, so the importance of exercise increases. Adding cardio and strength training workouts develops muscle mass and also increases metabolism and burns more calories to promote healthy weight loss. Three, working out increases bone health and strength. Regular activity builds healthy bones and helps maintain bone strength in seniors. Exercise works on bones much like it works on muscles by making them stronger. Because bone is living tissue, it changes in response to the forces placed on it. When you exercise regularly, your bone adapts by building more cells and becomes denser. Four, staying active promotes heart and cardiovascular health. Frequent physical activity reduces the risk of heart disease and enhances and boosts the energy that will improve your heart health overall. Number five, exercise builds positive mental health. Living an active lifestyle and exercising frequently leads to a variety of mental health benefits. Exercise is shown to help fight depression. When muscle generates um, generated mood boosters become active, it's shown to reduce stress. Maintaining active le activity levels may also help slow the progression of brain disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. Six, building strength prevents falls. Falls are serious at any age, but seniors are particularly at risk of injury of bone strength 
is low and density is low. Having an active lifestyle will help you stay balanced and prevent falls by building muscle strength and improving your bone health. Number seven, staying active promotes sleep. Sedentary, sedentary individuals tend to have more trouble getting quality rest, but an active lifestyle could help promote sleep. Adding regular aerobic exercise during the day promotes deeper sleep by raising your core body temperature and encouraging rest when you start to cool down. Working out two to three hours before bed will help you stay asleep and leave you waking up refreshed. Eight, aerobic exercise reduces hypertension. If you're a senior with hypertension, exercise is medically proven to help lower your blood pressure. Adding 30 minutes or more of moderate aerobic activity five times a week will measurably reduce your blood pressure. Nine, exercise improves overall social wellness. For many seniors, having an active social life can be difficult. Sometimes aging adults have increasing by increasing their social uh, wellness by making exercise into a fun group activity with others in their communities helps improve their social wellness. Whether it's joining a walking group or participating in aerobics class, socializing while working out keeps people young at heart and mentally sharp. 10, working out keeps you focused and gives you more energy. Exercise is linked to improve cognitive function and better motor skills. So then I wanted to talk about um, physical therapy. So I wanted to ask the question if anybody had physical therapy before. A lot of times with seniors, the activity we just talked about is difficult. So has anyone had PT for more generalized changes, deconditioning, falls, unsteadiness, balance? PT, PT may not just be for an orthopedic problem like a knee injury or a shoulder injury, but may be related to more general changes in stamina, endurance, balance, falls, or pain. What comes after PT is just as important to maintain physical activity as part of an everyday life. So what happens after discharge? If you've either been younger with physical therapy or been a senior with physical therapy, usually they send you home after your therapy's over with a home exercise program. So I wanted to go over the reasons why people might not continue that at home. So the HEP, the home exercise program is boring. People don't see the benefit. They don't know how to progress. It no longer seems relevant to them. A strengthening, balancing, or flexibility program is just not enough. People often don't know how to progress their exercises on their own or don't have the self-initiative or drive on their own to be able to take it to the next level. Seniors often need external support to maintain activity levels and are otherwise at risk for decline or an adverse event. So the current activity recommendations, aerobic exercise, and this seems like a big number for a lot of people, is actually 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous activity. So that breaks down to 30 minutes of exercise five days a week. One minute of vigorous exercise is equivalent to two minutes of moderate intensity exercise. You can use the talk test guide to figure out how intense you're working out. If you can talk, but not sing, that's a moderate intensity. Current activity recommendations continued. They recommend that you work on your balance three days a week, flexibility two to three days a week, and that being three to five reps of some kind of exercise with a 30, 20 to 30 second hold and stretch. These are the current CDC guidelines for older adults, but what do these guidelines really mean? How is it difficult for seniors to reach their goal? Seniors often have considerations that contribute to their decreased activity levels. They're intimidated. They don't know where to start. They don't know what you should be doing. They might not like exercise. They aren't motivated to do it. They're nervous or afraid to fall, or been, there have been changes to their mood, depression, cognition that further limit their activity. Is 150 minutes a really what's best for you? It depends on factors that are completely individualized. Having a physical therapy led program is important to determine your baseline, preferences, motivators, and current activity levels. Also, it can identify underlying conditions and factors that may contribute to your difficulties. 150 minutes is the goal, 
to work towards because it's established for health benefits, but that doesn't mean that it's the starting point. We need to be realistic. Benefits of regular physical activity include improved mood, quality of life, management of chronic health conditions like diabetes and hypertension, decreases the risk of some cancers, improves sleep quality, energy levels, brain function, strength, balance, and mobility. What's the best type of exercise if you're a senior? It doesn't really exist. The variety and the novelty is important. Strength, endurance, flexibility, and balance are the four most important types of exercise. Finding a program that works for you is enjoyable, realistic, and helps empower you to stay active. The best exercise is finding the program that helps you reach your wellness goal. Aside from knowing the physical benefits, are there any other reasons that exercise is important? A lot of people think that exercise is just for you know, physical gain, but truly it improves the quality of life, a senior's independence, their safety, and it de decreases their risk of falls. Exercise and activity has also been known to have brain benefits. So in keeping a healthy body, you are also keeping a healthy mind. It has improved overall brain function, thinking, and memory, delays, de uh, delays disease progression and neurogenerative degenerative diseases, the type and amount of frequency is important, and having a physical therapy-led program also helps you identify goals to ensure that the right types of exercises and activities are being incorporated into your routine. The types of exercises that are recommended for seniors used to be more passive in nature and they stayed away from increasing intensity levels. More recently, it's been found that the benefits of physical activity far outweigh the minor risks. Research suggests that we have undertrained seniors and that they can participate in more intense types of exercise than previously thought. There are special considerations for the aging population, so it's important to have someone help guide you and be safe and successful. What does insurance cover if you're looking to have physical therapy as part of your beginning of your exercise routine? It, it, it covers things that are medically necessary, skilled interventions. It's driven by functional limitations and goals. It's reactive in nature, usually after there has been a change in function or adverse event, as opposed to being proactive. It won't cover after the goals have been met. So then what do you do? Wellness programs that are led by physical therapists are new and very helpful and growing in popularity in independent living and senior communities. But they're not covered by insurance. So PT versus wellness, if a senior is looking to start a program, there are insurance coverage limitations for wellness. There are preventative and wellness versus restorative. Discharge from therapy or stable function when insurance will no longer cover may be a good time to transition to wellness. Importance in aging. You want to provide, uh, prevent a decline, prevent a fall, and maintain participation in activities and overall independence, and minimize the risk of health complications. Wellness is a way of life. The goal is to help maintain your health now so you can stay active, independent at your home and decrease expenses later. Kate Jaffe, DPT from LGM Wellness helped me with this. So this was just a little slide about her program. And then I just wanted to go into what I did and kind of what I help with in the community. And so I wanted to do a slide about the senior care continuum because people start at their house and a lot of times they have to go to the hospital for some kind of um, physical injury or ailment. And then they may either be discharged back to their house or go to a skilled nursing facility. They may then, if they go home and are on physical therapy, may need extra um, support like a senior center, uh, some kind of caregiver. So there, there's a lot of things that go into our health as we age. And I just wanted to kind of put that into a picture. What I do is I work for five buildings if anyone ever needs to go and get skilled rehab. So I just wanted to highlight those. We have two that are in Doylestown. 
One is called Heritage Point. It's on Main Street. And the big specialties that they have there are palliative and a wound care program. And they're starting renovations in the fall, actually right now. Liberty Point has a special uh, Russian cultural program, an on-site hemodialysis den. And that's also located in Doylestown. And it is also undergoing renovations right now. We have Caring Heart, which has 100 private short-term rooms in Philadelphia. And they are um, working on um, parenting parentino, peer, parentineal, I'm sorry, I can't speak tonight, dialysis, and we also have a COVID positive unit. The last two that we have are Richboro, which is in Richboro, PA. They have short-term and long-term care. And then Buckingham Valley, which is in Newtown. And that is the end of my slideshow. If you have any questions about that continuum of care, you are more than welcome to give me a call. Great, thank you so much, Sharon and Anita. I appreciate that. So right now we are going to open this up to our um, participants and see if there's any questions in our chat. So just bear with me one second. And I'm going to share that. Okay. All right, so let's see, do we have any? Let's see if there's anything in our chat. All right, we do have a couple. So one is coming in right now. Let me just grab that. Okay, this question is for Anita. Anita. How do I find out about free online courses that are offered by various organizations? Anita, you, can, on you. There you, go. you can either go directly to the organization if you know they have courses, such as Delaware Valley University has a senior program. So you could go to their website and follow it in from there or just Google free online senior courses and you'll find all kinds of different courses that you might find interesting that you can do free. Some that are more like school courses through Khan Academy, um, and places like that, and some that are just fun type things to do, including physical fitness type programs. But Google is always your friend. Good, that's a great idea. And then the next question that is coming up is for Sharon. Sharon, can you incorporate body and mind focused activities together? Sure, I think that that's a great question. I think a lot of what Anita is talking about, you could do if you were gonna say, do an activity where you left the house. Like maybe there is um, a senior center where there is an exercise group or a presentation, just getting up and getting out and being active is really going to be something that's gonna help you stay active in your body and mind as you age. And the more that we can do where we get out of the house, I think especially in this time where we spend so much time in the house, if we can really does benefit the body and then the mind as well. I know one of my favorite activities that I'm not able to do anymore, but was, was when I would go to the gym with my friend. I don't know how much we worked out super hard, but it was a commitment that I made that I went with her and we talked about our favorite TV shows while we did the elliptical for like a half hour, three times a week. It was a fun commitment that, you know, led to us being active. And when you make a commitment with a friend or a family member, you're more likely to actually go and go through with it. So I think, you know, doing one of those physical activities that could be an outing would be a great thing to do to stimulate the body and mind. That's great advice. Um, I actually have another question for you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. 
I'm unsure how to begin an exercise routine. Where should I start? The biggest question for that and the answer would probably be in your physician. If you have some underlying health problems, you shouldn't just start by going outside and running three miles. You should ask your physician if you should consult a physical therapist, if you should join a gym, what kind of program they recommend, and they'd be able to point you in the right direction. Good advice. Um, Anita, we have one for you. Here's an interesting question. Does playing games on the computer make it more susceptible to virus and hackers? Not really. It's especially if you go to known sites. I would suggest that you always go to the site that you want to go to rather than if you receive an email from somebody that recommends a site, because that's where um, the problems come in if you're directed to something that you don't know about, because they're the ones that come up there and are fishing for personal information. And you should never have to give personal information to play a game. I mean, um, right. they start asking for a credit card number and the game is free. Why should you have to do that? So it's okay. just following the general safety practices of being online. And speaking of safe sites, Anita, do you have any that you recommend, any sites to get some games from? Um, if you like solitaire, Microsoft has a solitaire suite um, that you can download. Most of them now, most of the games, you can get through your app store since Windows 10 and Windows 11 use apps and uh, tablets have also used apps. You can just go to the app store and then in, there's a little box in the corner that you can search for number games or different kinds of games. And um, anything that you get through an app is through the app store is going to be fine. And there isn't any danger to it. All right, that's great advice. Um, and now, Sharon, we have one last question for you that I can see here. What are the best ways to stay motivated? I think staying motivated is best when you hold yourself accountable with somebody else, whether it's you promise your spouse or a child or you make a commitment to go, you know, with a friend to meet them somewhere. If you're making a commitment to someone else, you're not just making it to yourself, you're more likely to actually go out and do that activity. That would be my suggestion. Okay, that's wonderful. Now, um, ladies, thank you so much thank for, you for having us. the wonderful advice that you've given everybody. Um, I'm going to just, I, we appreciate you taking the time and sharing all this knowledge from the fields that you both have. I'm going to share with our audience the next couple of slot, a uh, next couple of presentations that we have coming up. Um, I just want to make sure we do that. We're going to talk about we meet here. The upcoming webinars are the third Wednesday of each month. And here we go. Can everybody see that? Okay, great. So it's the third Wednesday of each month, 6 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, next month, it's actually me presenting because we're coming up on Medicare. It's Medicare annual enrollment period. It's called Medicare Made Simple. Uh, we're going to talk through the basics of Medicare as well as what should you do during annual enrollment. And then in October, October 19th, we have another exciting webinar, Needing Help your financial and legal strategies for managing transitions among um, people either we're taking care of or seniors or things like that. So that will be presented by Dawn Wright and Mary Slack of Day-to-Day -day Financial Management and Jessica Sawyer of the Sawyer Law Firm. So we, every, we meet every third Wednesday of each month, 6.30 via Zoom. 
Um, they usually last between 45 minutes and an hour. And I'm just going to go uh, to our next slide. We also like to put this up every chance we get. If you have any reporting that you could do of elder abuse, neglect, financial exploitation, abandonment, there's a 24-hour hotline that we like to show people. You might see somebody in your neighborhood, so that we always like to put that up there as like a public service announcement for that. And then our last thing is a plug on how to find us and connect with us. Senior Services Network dash sepa.com is how you can reach us. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, all those different locations as well. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to wrap up our seminar this evening and thank everybody for joining us. Again, thank you, Anita and Sharon, for helping and sharing with us these knowledges on keeping our mind and body active during this very um, important time in our lives. So thank you very much and have a good night. Bye everyone.